like to talk for a moment about the role the Coast Guard fulfilled on 9-11. Really an incredible effort there. Tell us what they did. Um, they were responding when the second plane hit. There were several responses. The, the CO up in Cape Cod, uh, Massachusetts, remembered a, a fire in Puerto Rico where people had been trapped on the roof. Um, and he launched two uh, H-60 helicopters, Jayhawks, from there on his own authority when he couldn't get higher up. They tried to get to the roof at the North Tower after the first collapse. They were ordered down because uh, they were told the Air Force <clears throat> would shoot down anybody over, over the city. And, and one of the pilots was arguing we're the rescue uh, force, but they were forced to land as they got on the radio to try and make the argument to move on. The second tower was lost. Um, so that could was they unfortunate. Have, if, if they had not been ordered to stand down, could some of the people They're convinced they would have saved, saved some of the people on the North Tower. And uh, was this was anyone ever held accountable for this? It seems like such a heartbreaking tragedy. It, it was the chaos of the moment. Uh, what happened then is, as the smoke from the towers created panic in in South New York, they had initially, after the second plane struck, shut down the harbor. At that point, vessel traffic uh, control, which was the Coast Guard, ordered all working boats in the harbor to go to South Manhattan. And you had this flotilla. W one of them I talked to, who was who was there at Battery Park. He said it was like the scene from The Longest Day. He turned around and looked through the smoke, and through the smoke emerged this fleet of tugboats and fast ferries and fireboats. And the Coast Guard was able to coordinate the evacuation of half a million people off lower Manhattan and, and avoid the panic that was setting in at the water's edge. So it gave people another way to get away from the, the area. The main way to get away. Yeah. Most most people, I'm, I grew up in New York, and most people don't understand it's 80% of the city is disconnected from the mainland. We're, we're a water city. And this was, people think, everybody evacuated over the Brooklyn Bridge. Half a million people were taken off by, by water. Has there ever been a maritime evacuation of that many people in that period of time? Uh, this is the largest in history as far as anybody knows. And with no preparation? It's, as I say, it's what they do. They're, they're, they're trained to respond, and, and if they don't have the resources, improvise uh, in, in water situations in this very tough environment of our oceans and harbors. And, of, of course, 9-11 transformed the Coast Guard in other ways from... From and, there. and how did they even let this this odd collection of vessels, how did they even let them know that they should go there and help evacuate people? On the Marine Radio, the, the Coast Guard, the captain of the port in every major port is a Coast Guard uh, uh, officer. And they put the uh, word out on Channel 16, which is the Coast Guard emergency uh, radio frequency, and, and on the other. And, and, of course, like many New Yorkers, the tugboat captains, the ferry captains, they were ready to respond. They were looking for how they could help. Um, they also brought in the strike team from New Jersey. The environmental strike team was the first on scene. They declared ground zero a hazardous site. This they is the Coast Guard strike the team. Coast Guard mm -hmm. strike team. There are three national strike teams the Coast Guard has that respond to oil spills, hazardous wastes, uh, other disasters. And, and they arrived, and, and their immediate response was they started you know, seeing all these hazardous wastes at the rubble pile. They ordered people to wear respirators. They began to set up decontamination stations, at which point the EPA came in and declared there wasn't an air quality problem. By the end of the week, it was very frustrating for the Coast Guard strike team commanders. They set up decontamination show showers. They were told you can't even use the word decontaminate. And so they had to create incentives like like bottled water and chairs for, for the, the workers to rest at to get them into the decontamination. Of course, we know with the passage of time that there were lots of environmental problems, personal health problems that have resulted from the people lots, who were Lots there. of respiratory disease as a result of, of the rest of the government not responding right at the time. Why did the EPA not want the Coast Guard to go ahead with what it was doing there? Um, looking back at it, there was some response we know that that Karl Rove in the White House and others in the White House didn't want to create panic. And that was the wrong way of not creating panic, obviously, to put the workers at risk. A, a more responsible way was the chief of naval operations called Jim Loy, who was then commandant of the Coast Guard. And it was agreed that putting Coast Guard cutters with their white hulls, putting them into New York Harbor, would reassure the public in a way that naval ships of war wouldn't. So that week, the Coast Guard began to build up its security capacity to go from a peacetime to a wartime footing. We'll talk, we're talking to David Helvarg. He's written a new book. It's called Rescue Warriors, the U.S. Coast Guard, America's Forgotten Heroes. This was a portion of a Book TV program. You can view the entire program and many other Book TV programs online. Go to booktv.org. Type the name of the author or book into the search area in the upper left-hand corner of the page. Select the Watch link. 
Now you can view the entire program. You might also explore the Recently on Book TV box or the Featured Video box to find recent and featured programs.